Hi, I'm Todd Palmer from the Department of Biology at the University of Florida, and along with my collaborator Jake Goheen at the University of Wyoming, I'd like to share with you a story of ants, plants, and elephants that takes place here in the Laikipia Plateau of central Kenya. In both Jake's and my lab, we study the structure and function of savanna ecosystems. A defining characteristic of these ecosystems is their vegetation type, a mixture of trees and grasses. The relative abundances of these two vegetation types is important because tree cover plays a big role in determining a number of ecosystem processes, including carbon storage, fire frequency, and both nutrient and water cycles. In the savannas of Africa, one of the most conspicuous modifiers of the tree grass balance is the African elephant, an herbivore that can weigh in excess of 12,000 pounds and is capable of utterly destroying trees as it feeds on the phloem and leaves. This poses a challenge for plants. How can a plant protect itself from this huge animal? While some plants simply do their best to tolerate the intensive damage that elephants wreak, there is one tree species that has a unique approach to dealing with herbivores both large and small. The tree is Acacia drapanolobium, a so-called ant plant that engages in a mutualistic relationship with colonies of tiny bodyguard ants that live on the tree. The tree provides the ants with a sugary solution excreted at glands on the leaves, as well as houses in the form of swellings that occur throughout the tree. In exchange for this food and housing, the ants vigorously defend the acacias when the plants are disturbed, swarming onto the intruder and biting with their piercing mandibles. But can these tiny defenders protect trees from the threat posed by elephants, the world's largest land-dwelling mammal? Well, when Jake and I saw scenes like this one, we began to wonder if these ants might be more formidable defenders than we'd imagined. The photo was taken during a drought year when elephants were obliterating a lot of trees. What you see in the foreground is Acacia mellifera, an acacia species that does not house ants, and you can see what kind of shape it's in. Surrounding that tree are Acacia drapanolobium, the ant plant, and as you can see, those plants are completely untouched by elephants. To figure out whether ants were in fact capable of defending trees from elephants, we conducted several experiments. The first thing we wanted to know was, are elephants avoiding these trees because they are protected by ants, or do the trees just taste bad? To get at this question, we conducted feeding trials at an elephant orphanage in southern Kenya. In these trials, we offered elephants a choice of branches of one of their favorite plant species, Acacia mellifera, both without ants and with ants added, and branches of the ant plant, Acacia drapanolobium, both with and without ants. Once we'd collected these data, we then used Cox regression models to assess the probabilities of feeding on the different branch types by the elephants. What this graph shows is that elephants like to eat Acacia drapanolobium, the uppermost black circles, as much as they like to eat Acacia mellifera, the uppermost red circles, as long as there are no ants on either of the branch types. When ants are present on branches of either plant species, shown by the lowermost triangles, elephants avoid both Acacia species. While these feeding trials were informative, we still needed evidence that elephants would respond to the presence or absence of ants in the field. So in a second set of experiments, we manipulated ant colonies on plants out in the savanna, creating a gradient of colony densities ranging from empty trees to trees that were fully occupied by protective ants. The results of this experiment are shown in this graph. The black dots are individual trees ranging from very low ant densities on the left side of the figure to high ant densities on the right. Elephant damage after one year is shown on the y-axis of the graph, and as you can see, trees with few or no ants were much more heavily damaged by elephants than trees with abundant ant populations. The next step was to examine what effect ants might be having on savannas at larger spatial scales. To that end, we located a series of elephant-proof fences that had been constructed on two different soil types back in 2003. One of the soil types, called red soils, is dominated by acacia species that do not associate with ants. The other soil type, called black soils, is almost completely dominated by the ant plant Acacia drapanolobium. We then analyzed satellite images taken in 2003 and five years later, after elephant abundances had steadily increased, in 2008, comparing tree cover in areas where elephants had access to acacias with areas where elephants were not able to feed on the trees. And here a picture is worth a thousand words. This is an area dominated by acacias without ants, and the elephant-proof fence is shown in red. As you can see, over five years, tree cover declines strongly outside of the fence where elephants have been feeding on trees. In striking contrast, on the black soils dominated by the ant plant, tree cover did not differ significantly in the presence versus absence of elephants over five years.
Our results show that tiny ant bodyguards are capable of stabilizing tree cover in the face of herbivory by the world's largest land mammal, suggesting a powerful role for plant defense in the regulation of savanna ecosystem dynamics.